What is the best class in Remnant 2? Well, this list is definitely a tough one, because the reality is each class is designed for something specific, and what they do, they do best, making each class the best for the role you want to play as. However, if we must rank each from F to S, then this is it. So, let's go ahead and rank every class in Remnant 2 from worst to best. Explorer is easily the worst class in Remnant 2, for the simple reason that half the stats you gain from it are not for combat. The Prime perk grants extra drops like Scrap, Luminite, and all your currency-based items. Great for farming, and that's about it. This doesn't, however, make the class useless in combat completely. This class gains a very nice damage buff that's easy to keep active by taking relics, and the stamina reduction from the Planeswalker skill allows you to buff yourself and teammates by a significant amount, so much so that you can create melee builds around it and even use the speed to get out of attack range from bosses. If you haven't tried this class at all, the one thing you're missing is the Fortune Hunter skill. This highlights all special items such as rings and amulets, allowing you to find them much quicker, especially effective when solving different puzzles, which we all know you do a lot of in Remnant 2. As for the Gold Digger skill, it's pretty solid and nice for buffing your team, but mainly used with low cooldown. The class is used to get you from point A to point B as quickly as possible and to find stuff you could easily miss, making it used probably like 5% of the time, at least on Apocalypse difficulty. The trade, on the other hand, is better than you think. Plus 15% movement speed can really get you out of a tough spot and add on haste to make combat feel very fluid. Explorer helps you explore better, and while it is the worst class to take into combat by miles, it does benefit the overall gameplay when needed. F tier. The Handler class is one of the coolest ideas of all the classes, while also being the most disappointing class at the same time. You see, the handler gets a dog. This dog fights for you, revives you, and teammates and can apply bleeding to enemies. Not to mention his aggro pull or gaining enemy attention is some of the strongest in the game. You can throw this class on just to get enemies to not fight you and go after the dog instead. But that's all the good stuff. The bad aspect comes to the fact that all of your skills and the two damage buffs only stay active while the dog is alive which means when the dog goes down, you lose over half of your build instantly. On lower difficulties, okay, not really that bad at all, but on Apocalypse, the dog always dies. Like every time you get into a tough fight, he goes down instantly. With a trait rugged to buff his health, this is less frequent in dungeons at least, but several of the boss fights just have these massive AoE attacks that the dog simply cannot avoid. You're forced to either revive him constantly or just lose all your buffs. And that's the thing. Yes, Handler is super effective when the dog is active, but it takes like one second for everything to fall apart. I will give this class credit in saying it's incredible as a prime class. The dog can even revive your co-op partners after you've been dead for a while. And it's really solid as a secondary class when running engineer. The maintenance, however, is far too high on this class and it only takes about five minutes in Apocalypse to see this. D tier. Summoner is as simple as it could possibly be. You get summons to help you fight, either two meatballs, two flyers, or one mega reaver. The meatballs are completely useless after you unlock the other two as they can attack flying enemies and just don't do that good a job but both the Flyers and Reaver are extremely powerful. They can deal extensive damage while taking attention off you. And the big factor here is fun. Everyone loves using summons. They're in so many video games and always a fan favorite because who doesn't like creating an army of minions to attack for you, like a necromancer would. This class also buffs both mod and skill damage by 35%, which is a very solid buff. And being able to control the root who are our main enemies feels pretty awesome. So what's the issue? To start, this class has the worst prime perk in the game, to the point where I'm actually of the opinion that it's completely worthless. The perk allows you to damage your own minions and make them go enraged, increasing their damage by 50%. What? A 50% bump? That's crazy! Until you use it, and the damage feels super meh, and they die in 5 seconds because you shot them. This prime perk is just not good. The passives you get are also all over the place. You get more damage, but only when your summons are alive. Okay, so in boss fights, you get half the buff half the time. That's not that great. Minions dying leaves an aura that heals, which really isn't that good while not being worthless by any means. 
and then you could use a relic to buff your summons a bit. You really need to go in to summon damage to make this class effective, and it underperforms most other classes every time. And the prime perk is never, ever going to be worth taking over Engineer's 50% skill damage buff that also grants you turret overclocking. Thankfully, you can make the best support healer in the game with this class by running Medic and Summoner to regen relics infinitely. But the class does suffer in a similar way to Handler in that you need the minions to be alive. When they aren't, you're missing about half your class. D tier. Gunslinger, I actually struggled ranking because on the one hand, this class makes what's called hugs, that being hunter and gunslinger, which is the best setup overall for range damage. Strong, no doubt. But then on the other hand, it's also the least unique in terms of gameplay and the skills are, well, pretty awful in variety. So as for passives, this class is great because it negates the insane reload speed that half the guns in this game have. Reducing that time is very nice and you get more range damage as well. The best aspect by far here is the Relic perk. When taking a Relic, it grants you 15% range damage for 10 seconds and reloads the currently equipped firearm, which is just insane that on many different weapons you can heal, buff, and reload in like a second. Also, this class doubles your ammo efficiency in several ways, which just makes things very nice. Not needing ammo in boss fights lets you focus on dodging and can cut down on your death count by a lot. That being said, this prime perk is borderline worthless. So this really isn't a big deal as you do need a great subclass as well, but man does this prime perk freaking suck. Anytime you use a gunslinger skill, both of your weapons are reloaded and you have infinite reserve ammo for about 5 seconds, which first off is useful, definitely useful, but only one time because all three of gunslinger skills only have one charge, and 5 seconds of infinite ammo only helps shotguns and snipers. I've only ever used this prime perk one time honestly and would usually take challenger's revive perk over this any day. But the worst aspect are the skills. Bullet Storm is on every single Gunslinger build as it is the only good skill this class has. With the insane damage buff you get from it on any weapon, you can't run anything else. For 20 seconds, you just get several range buffs that depend on the type of gun you're using. You could also use Quick Draw, which is very fun, but also deals no damage whatsoever. And even with building entirely around it, the damage just doesn't exist. Or you could use Sidewinder, which doesn't last long at all. Instant reload and instant swap, but man, it only lasts for 12 seconds and it has an 80 second cooldown. I tried a shotgun swap build and when active, you have loads of damage you can deal. And then for like the rest of the boss fight, you don't get to use it ever again. I felt like 12 seconds was far too little time to get into a good situation and actually start swapping. Again, a great skill to use, but it's kind of lame because you never really get to use it that much. So ultimately, Gunslinger is ridiculously strong for ranged builds, but lacks any versatility as it has one good skill, a prime perk I don't care for, and it's only for ranged combat. C tier. Invader is probably the most underrated and slept on class in Remnant 2, and that's because the Invader's perk and skills are a bit tricky. They revolve around misdirecting the enemy and controlling the battle instead of just dodging attacks. This class is only for ranged and melee damage, so you can't use mods or skills here, but Invader makes melee what it is, simply granting you twice the amount of damage you would normally be able to do on a no-gun build. The Prime perk leaves behind a decoy every time you use a skill. You also spawn in a decoy every time you use a relic and then dodge. These decoys can completely break the game when used correctly, because when active, bosses will not be able to attack you. They go for the red guy every time, which allows you to nullify attacks that you don't dodge well, get 20 feet from bosses while they don't see you, or just use them for a small damage buff. In fact, my first ever apocalypse clear in the game, I used the lifeless heart for 20 relics to spawn decoys over and over. At the time, my dodges weren't great. I didn't know the bosses that well and it didn't really matter. Invader, while tricky to use correctly, is the biggest crutch ever to lean on. And you know we have to talk about these skills because heck are they really cool. Void Cloak covers you in a black cloak that gives you an auto dodge. Any attack that would normally cause you to take damage instead triggers an instant dodge from your character. So a free hit? I mean, who doesn't enjoy that? The one issue with it is that this is much less useful the more damage an enemy deals, as the duration of the cloak diminishes based on damage. For example, you can dodge like three attacks from a basic enemy before it runs out, but one hit from a boss and you're done. Useful definitely, but less so the harder the game gets. Wormhole, on the other hand, is a game changer. This teleports you a great distance and often directly behind your enemy. The next attack from melee or range damage gets a 
300% boost, not only allowing you to easily get away from attacks, but get a nuke ton of damage in an instant. This skill in particular lets you use melee weapons to great effect, as mere 1000 crit turns into 3000 crit, and the cooldown on this is extremely low compared to the power it actually has. Reboot is also very useful as a skill since it grants you a backup that has all of your health, stamina, and ammo. Activate the backup and you go from taking a hit one second to being full health the next. Really interesting but also not super easy to build into. Invader in general is extremely unique and changes how you combat the game, but its damage perk requiring sprinting and evading to activate makes it just a bit less reliable, although not by much. B tier. Engineer is the biggest cheat code this game has, because when it comes to dodging, you don't get anything better than Engineer. With this class, you're allowed to carry one of three heavy weapons, flamethrower, impact cannon, or turret. If you simply cannot dodge a certain attack, grab your heavy weapon and I bet you can now. This class also grants a whopping plus 50% damage boost to skill damage, making it a must have on every skill build. The fact that they added a class based around turrets, which also deal ridiculous damage, is simply amazing to me. It never ceases to be fun grabbing my big old gun and mowing things down. Also, you have to admit the animations for activating the weapons are very well done and makes the class even more fun to use. The one and only downside to this class is that it has no versatility whatsoever. You either use it to buff Havoc builds or you use it to get high damage out of the heavy weapons. There really isn't anything else you can do with this. And it's probably the only class in the game that can only be used as a prime class and never as a subclass. Yeah, yeah, you can do anything, not the point. Engineer should never be used as a subclass, no two ways around it. The prime perk lets you overclock any of the three turrets for infinite ammo, more damage, and increased fire rate. This greatly boosts the effectiveness of your turrets to the point where you are actively nerfing your build by not using it as a prime. Which of course makes it a bit harder to use in unique ways as is just Engineer Handler or Engineer Archon. Doesn't really affect how incredible the class is, but it does affect how creative you can be when build crafting. B tier. Alchemist used to be a pretty decent class of course, but after they added in the Brewmaster's Core Amulet in the Awakened King DLC, this has never been better. It lets you use 6 or 7 total concoctions at one time to buff your character. Normally, you only get one of these, which is a massive difference. Alchemist really is all about the buffs. You normally get about 4 total concoctions, double the time on all needles and other curatives, and using a relic grants a random buff. Not to mention this class always has a base of plus 25% to all damage, and your curative effects apply to allies as well, allowing you to walk into a fight and grant 5 separate buffs to your team which could all do a number of different things. Of course Alchemist is worthless to new players as you need a lot of scrap to make use of the consumables correctly, but once you become a more veteran player there's nothing more satisfying than buffing up so much that enemies literally can't kill you. Like bro I just took enough medicine to nullify the game. Alchemist has a nice simplicity that makes it easy to work with. Want buffs? Go with Alchemist. Don't want buffs? Don't run with Alchemist. This is the one other class that you really shouldn't run as a subclass. The prime perk for extra concoctions is kind of the point when running this, so there's much less incentive to not main it. The difference being between this and Engineer is that this still can benefit you as a subclass. You could just use it for the skill that grants a free revive or enjoy having a 25% damage buff. The skills are also interesting as all three do something very similar. All three take out a vial and they smash it onto the ground. This creates a swirl of color that provides a different buff. Stoneskin being the least useful as it grants one stagger and reduces damage by 25%. The buff doesn't last long enough to justify relying on it and you could reach the DR cap without it either. Easily. Frenzy is insanely powerful, granting faster actions. Specifically, you can use this on melee builds to swing so fast you get thousands of damage out in seconds. And lastly, you have Elixir of Life, which grants a strong heal over time and revives anyone down. All you need is the buff active, and you can revive yourself or throw it on teammates to not waste time bending over. Alchemist is best used as a team class, jumping in with teammates to buff them up and keeping yourself alive through anything. And in the current state of the game, it makes for some really darn nice tank builds without ever even needing the medic class. A tier. 
Archon is by far the simplest class to explain while also being the biggest pain to get. This one is all based on mod power. Increased mod regen, more mod damage, and then even more mod regen. You get the idea. In order to get it, you have to go into what's called the back rooms. This requires wearing a very specific set of items which can take a long time to collect and heading to the labyrinth to unlock a data locked door. Once inside, you explore the back rooms a bit and collect the class item. It was a very fun secret when data miners found out about it just after the game's release, and it does give players a massive reward for putting time into the game. Not to mention, mod power is the easiest way to beat Remnant 2. You can find several mods that put out loads of power. The best by far are the big boys that deal either blast damage or exist as a single giant tornado. Mix these together and bosses take way more damage than you ever thought. The one and only issue with Archon are the skills. All three skills very poorly complement this class and do a much better job of complementing other classes. Reality Rune is a shield bubble that slows anything inside, granting you defense and making it easier to dodge enemy attacks. This is the most commonly used skill because at least it benefits any build in some way. Chaos Gate is this red circle around you that lags the crap out of your game. It increases all damage dealt and greatly boosts mod regen, while making you take 15% more damage. Unfortunately, something that makes you take more damage never has that much of an incentive to use even though this is so powerful. Often when I try and use it, I find myself saving it up for when I know I won't get hit, and then the fight's over and I didn't end up using it. And finally, you have Havoc Form. This lets you go full on lightning god mode and fly around the map electrocuting everything in sight. It's awesome and can be made to deal really good crit damage that walks through dungeons and handles bosses nicely. But while Havoc Form is awesome, it's a very tricky thing to use because unless you build entirely around it, Havoc does almost no damage whatsoever because Archon doesn't boost skill damage. Archon is probably the most noob-friendly class and the easiest access to power you can get, but you kind of in some way lose a skill slot most of the time you run this class. Or more accurately, you're forced to use one of three skills that doesn't really provide you with something you would need all the time. A tier. Hunter is your ranged class. It offers the best boost to range damage, weak spot damage, and overall vision. As far as passives go, there really isn't anything to talk about. When using a gun, you get the biggest damage boost right here. The skills are what makes this class so ridiculous. Starting out, you get one of the best mods from the first game as a skill in this game. Hunter's Mark will mark all targets around you with a red glow. This gives you incredible vision of dungeons and boss arenas to the point where you can avoid taking damage just from this knowledge alone and any marked target takes 15% more damage and crit. I often find myself using this skill because it's a good damage increase and makes areas like Lawson so easy to play. Hey, I can clearly see a gunner around that corner ready to shoot me. Well, now I get the first shot. Hunter's Focus is what should be the best hunter skill as it provides zero recoil and sway on your weapon with 25% more damage and 10% crit chance. Aiming your weapon for a bit activates this and marks targets you're aimed at, and it sounds like the best idea for automatic weapons, but needing to focus your weapon every time for the bonus can be a challenge when you're constantly dodging, reloading, switching weapons, using mods, etc, etc. In theory, it's pretty amazing, but Hunter's Mark is way more consistent. Then we have what's called Shroud, which is absurdly powerful. It basically makes you invisible. Once you fire a weapon, you come out of the cloak and gain 50% more damage. This damage falls off the longer you're uncloaked, so use this with a bow, shotgun, or sniper and recloak as you reload. The damage boost offered by this skill is just insane. Not to mention, the cloak completely negates many different boss mechanics. The other day I found out that both Talrathas and Shahala's orbs that they spawn in will not be able to track you when you're shrouded. For Shahala, that's over half the mechanics in that fight, and he's a tough boss for sure. Overall, all three skills are crazy for range damage bonuses and extra sight, while the Prime Park lets the skills last almost as long as you want, which means Hunter is really hard to run as a subclass and more of a Prime option most of the time. A tier. Here we have good old Medic. This class I often hear is called the Noob class, or the option for people who suck at the game. Medic is built around support, and it is the best example of support done right that I've ever seen. What's the most important thing in a video game? Staying alive. How do you do that in Remnant? You take a relic. 
Well, Medic's Prime Perk regens your relic charges the more you're healed, letting you have access to unlimited relics. Not to mention increased relic efficiency, more gray health efficiency, faster relic use speed, and stagger resist on relic use. And to top it off, Medic is the single most versatile class in the game, granting 25% more damage to all damage. This class is going to benefit range builds, melee builds, mod builds, skill builds, summon builds, green builds, blue builds. It benefits you no matter how you choose to play and all three skills amp up the gameplay a lot. Wellspring is a very quick cooldown for a free heal. Healing Shield is one of the best skills in the game, basically granting a shield that can take almost any attack and protect you. And Redemption grants a powerful health regen which will instantly revive down teammates. All three of these benefits your gameplay at any time, while Redemption makes co-op 1000 times easier to play. And of course, you can create the most powerful support class ever with Medic, that being the Root. Doctor. This makes you have unlimited health regen and grants that health regen to your teammates, letting you take 98% of attacks in the game and shrug it off. Support is highly underrated in like every game. Remnant 2 gives you a support build and blatantly goes, oh yeah, this is uh, overpowered by the way. Medic is so high on the list simply for the fact that it always is beneficial, being great as a prime class and subclass offering three extremely useful skills. S tier. Challenger is the second best class in Remnant 2 for its incredible versatility and absolute raw damage. The Prime Perk lets you get a free revive upon being downed, which is very useful and fun to have. This does mean using Challenger as a subclass is easy to do since you only miss out on a revive and can run, say, Hunter for much more damage instead. But both ways provide something useful. Then we have the passives which turn this class into a moving truck. Plus 35% to all damage as long as your character is in close range. Take less damage from enemies, reduce stamina cost for wearing more armor, and using a relic gives you more defense. This class by itself makes you a walking tank that gets hit and spits on the enemy's grave. The skills offered are some of the best as well. War Stomp being the exception as it's fun to use, but I mean the death wave isn't really that good overall. Just a fun and decent option. Juggernaut, however, grants several heavy buffs that really makes you a walking tank, letting you get much more melee damage and beat down gun-based bosses with a sword. Or you have Rampage, which has you turn into Wolverine and get several massive buffs just from being angry. Rampage is actually the single best skill in the game for gun damage and amps up its damage to the max for a very short duration. And don't even get me started on melee. Challenger is the melee class. Everything about it makes it work really good up close for ranged weapons, but melee is what this class does. And if you want to go head to head with any boss and bash him down, then you'll be doing it with the Challenger equipped. Set up, you get over 85% more melee damage with this class with fast attack speed and the defense that keep you alive. This plus Invader or this an Alchemist and you have melee builds that beat every boss in the game sometimes faster than range damage can. Challenger has the most damage with high versatility, as all damage benefits more than just range damage like Hunter and Gunslinger have, and you literally become too angry to stop, making the class very fun to utilize. S tier. And finally, we have the most powerful and most versatile class in Remnant 2, that being Ritualist. Anyone telling you this class is weak has been living under a rock, because as soon as it was introduced, status builds have been breaking the game ever since. Before it was Acid, and then when they patched that, shock damage can now beat bosses faster than anything in the game. Ritualist is status damage. You gain easy access to all the elements, more damage with those elements, and status spread that cannot be matched. And you know what the benefit of status is? Overtime damage that takes out enemy health while focusing on dodging and staying alive. Status damage lets you get that extra edge you need while always having the damage capable of beating any boss. The Prime Perk is one of the best in the game, allowing you to spread all statuses on a target to other enemies once that target dies. This means you need to get one kill with all the elements and all of a sudden eight or nine enemies just drop dead around them. Satisfying, powerful, and fun as heck. You also have a 10% crit boost to any enemy affected with a status, which is the best buff we have in the game. You can run this with range damage just for more crit chance that beats hugs with Hunter and Ritualist, at least potentially. And of course, we have the strongest active skill in the game, that being Miasma. 
This lets you apply shock, burn, acid, and bleed to every enemy in a wide radius, all while looking really cool. This is the most versatile skill useful on any build as it simply offers amazing elemental damage for a minimum of 10 seconds, and shock will obliterate groups making it almost too easy to clear dungeons with. Miasma was a game changer, letting you always have a good skill in your back pocket and letting that skill hit everything in the map instantly. This class makes the game easier to play on every single level, and some of the hardest bosses in the game like Venom become child's play once you run status. You do have the option to not run Miasma, and sadly both options are just not that great. Eruption gives you a high damage explosive on any enemy affected with status, and while it is good, the cooldown isn't enough to be used in solo play. Now in co-op, you can run this with max cooldown and hit for thousands of damage repeatedly, which is the only strong use I've really found for this ability, and it refreshes all statuses making it somewhat compatible with mods and mutators, but Miasma is better almost all the time. And of course, we have Death Wish, the worst and least versatile skill in Remnant 2. This makes you take damage over time that will quickly end you, but you get a powerful lifesteal and 35% more damage. Originally, it was possible to negate the self-damage with the Kinship trait, however, However, this turned out to be a bug, and once fixed, there is no good reason to run this skill. It simply kills you too quickly, and there is no way to guarantee you're going to be able to deal damage to get your lifesteal. Hopefully, this does get a rework in the future, as it's something you either try to use and maybe get something out of, or you just never get anything out of it. But who cares, because Miasma is always that good. So Ritualist gets a blatantly overpowered skill, insane damage buffs that work on all other classes, and is the easiest way to beat the game right now, from dungeon clears to boss damage in general. S tier. And there you have every class in Remnant 2 ranked from worst to best. Each class is really fun to use and makes the game unique to play with loads of build variation. But if you want something that always benefits you, Medic, Challenger, and Ritualist bring enough to the table to sedate a giant and offer a lot of really powerful tools you can mix in with the rest of the classes. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and more importantly, learned a bit more about how classes can be used. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.